A oh, warm welcome to today's talk, Saturday the 9th of April. Now, quite a few countries, the United States, the United Kingdom, Israel, Hong Kong, um, offering fourth doses of vaccine now. Quite a lot of countries are. So in this video, we want to sort of give the information that you're going to need to make an informed consent about that. Is this a good idea or not? Now, the first thing it, we notice, this, this is the paper we're going to be looking at here. Uh, which is it's an interesting paper. It's well written, very well written. Um, New England Journal of Medicine. Um, but what it doesn't do is tell us the effect of natural immunity. All it does is compare the effect of a third dose against the effect of a fourth dose in people over the age of 60. And it does, it does, it does a good job in that. It compares those with the three doses over the age of 60 and those with a fourth dose over the age of 60. Is, is it a good idea? And if you haven't got time to watch the video, um, in the short term at least, at least for the first six weeks, there's no question from this data that the fourth dose is conferring additional protection against hospitalisation and severe disease, at least for that time period. It's not conferring much protection, or in fact it confers virtually no protection against uh, reinfection after a period of six weeks. So, But some protection against severe disease and hospitalisation, which is good. And of course it's obvious that if you give an extra antigen, is going to produce more antibodies. So it's not too surprising. What I'm more interested in, though, is, is the longevity, the effect on the B and T cells, and it doesn't really tell us that. And, of course, the other thing that's um, f fairly glaring in its admission, it doesn't compare the effect of vaccine-induced immunity against uh, natural immunity, which we'll, we'll look at uh, in a minute. But let's just look at the details on this paper here. Um, so protection of a fourth dose is the question. And of course, in Israel, it was the Pfizer vaccine. This is the Pfizer vaccine here. Uh, January, Israel start, January 2nd, Israel started to roll out a, a fourth dose. So they were ahead of the game. That's why we're getting this data fairly quickly. And this paper's only published uh, two or three days ago. So this is we're using this because it's the most up-to-date that we have on the subject, which, of course, we always want to be as up-to-date as possible. So effects of uh, infection and severe, disease, and severe disease is what we want to know. Is it protecting against infection? Uh, the answer is not very much for not very long. Is it protecting against severe disease? Yes, it appears to be protecting against severe disease for at least six weeks to a fair extent is, is the answer. But we'll give the precise data. Uh, Israeli Minister of Health, one and a quarter million people. Fine. Uh, Om Omicron was predominant in the time that this, inf uh, this study was going on, 10th of January through to the 2nd of March is the study time. Uh, confirmed infection and severe infection is what they were looking at. Now, uh, starting eight days after a receipt of a fourth dose. So they looked at people who'd had a fourth dose and a, a timed lag of eight days for the uh, for some immunity to be developed after the vaccine it, it is quite reasonable. That's consistent with other studies that have been done. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, so basically they had the four dose group here. So that was the first group that they were comparing with. Then they had the three dose group, people that only had three doses. So that's the second group they were comparing with. So again, pretty reasonable. And then they had a, they had a third group here as well. These people received a fourth dose three to seven days earlier. So the effect of this would not yet have kicked in. So they called that an internal control group. And given that these people had had a fourth dose of vaccine, but it wasn't yet time for that vaccine to work, it does seem very reasonable to use that as a third group. So they ended up with these three groups they can compare it with. Four, four, uh, four dose group, three dose group, and uh, this internal control group who've had the fourth dose, but a relatively short time ago. Now, what were the results here? Fourth dose group, uh, so number of cases of severe COVID-19 per 100,000 person days. Now, they've done this before, this, this format of study. And, and what it does is it, it takes into account the, uh, the number of people in the study and the number of time that's elapsed and works out how many infections there are per 100,000 person days. And again, perfectly reasonable, well-recognised uh, well technique. Uh, the four-dose group, there was 1.5 infections per 100,000 days. Three-dose group, there was uh, 3.9 infections per 100,000 days. And the, uh, the internal control group, there was 4.2 infections per 100,000 days. Actually, that's severe infections. So this is all talking about severe infections here. So we can see a pretty large effect, only 1.5 severe infections per 100,000 days in the four-dose, more than that, 3.9 in the three-dose. 
and more than that even in the uh, internal control group. Now, what's happening here? Because these were three to seven days, weren't they, after vaccination. What probably happens here is people that have had the, uh, the fourth vaccine, it actually alters their behaviour and, and they interact more. Is that the explanation, given that Omicron is more contagious? It could be. Um, it's hard to think of another reason why people would have lower levels of uh, protection in the first few days after vaccine, unless there's some immunological effect going on that's not recognised. But more likely, more likely, I think, there to be behavioural. That's the most likely explanation of that. But uh, we see it went up, so there we go. There are the results. Adjusted rates of severe COVID-19, now they, they adjusted for the usual things, age, sex, and also uh, ethnicity, racial background. So adjusted rate of severe COVID-19. Now, this was from the 10th of January to the 2nd of March. And again, this is severe disease. So all this is we're talking about severe disease. All these figures are risk of severe disease with the reduced risk of severe disease after a Thor vaccine dose for a period of time. Uh, in the four weeks after receipt of the fourth dose, so pretty limited follow-up, four-dose group lower than the three-dose group by a factor of 3.5. So the four-dose group three and a half times less likely to get severe disease, which is, is reasonable. I mean, the overall numbers aren't that high because Omicron is less pathogenic and there's background immunity in the population. But nevertheless, you could argue that that's a reasonable level of, of protection, three and a half times less likely to get severe disease. And the fourth dose group compared to the internal control group, a factor of 2.3. So here we see that uh, the people who had the fourth dose were 2.3, a factor of 2.3 times less likely to get severe disease. But protection against severe disease did not wane during the first six weeks. So in the first six weeks, this is maintained. Now, this does indicate that there could be some effect on B and T cells because it's maintained. But there again, we know that vaccines, uh, the antibodies can persist for several months. So it could still be a, an antibody effect. So it doesn't tell us what we'd like to know, really. But six weeks is a reasonable time period. It, it is preserved for that period of time. Um, but let's look at the actual risk of infection now. Uh, number of cases... The number of cases of confirmed infection, um, number of cases per uh, confirmed infection per 100,000 person days. And this is this is the unadjusted rate, but the straight rate. Four, fourth dose, 177 infections. Three dose group, 361 infections. Internal control group, 388 infections. So that's number of cases of uh, confirmed infection per 100,000 days. But confirmed infection in the fourth week, and we'll see this bit on the graphics, but uh, 10th of January to the 22nd of March, fourth dose group lower than uh, the three dose group by a factor of two. So there were half, uh, if you'd only had three vaccine doses, you were twice as likely to get infection. Um, that's symptomatic infection. But the converse of this, of course, is if you have symptomatic infection, it's more likely to give you natural immunity. So there is a bit of a trade off there. But it is showing some effect, so some benefit against, uh, some protection against infection, but all, all bit for a short period of time. Now, um, four, four doses group lower than in the internal control group by a factor of 1.8 for, for, for symptomatic infection. But however, this protection waned in later weeks. And this is perhaps the key graphic from this study here. So what we have here, um, these, this is severe illness here. So we see that the protection, and, and this is uh, adjusted rate ratios up there. So obviously the higher, the better. Um, so three to seven days, okay, it's lower. Then the, the effect of the vaccine kicks in and it goes up. At three weeks, it goes up. At four weeks, it goes up. At five weeks, it goes down a little bit. But at six weeks, it goes up again. So interesting. So we are seeing fairly good levels of uh, protection against severe disease. And this is maintained for at least six weeks. Now, before we just come back to that in a minute, let's look at the way that um, this is the protection against uh, symptomatic infection. So that goes up a little bit, but not by much. This is only, that's one, that's a factor of 1.5. That's a factor of two there. So it's not big difference. 
bit more protection against an actual infection there, then it levels off and then it goes down, it goes down and it goes down and it goes down until at eight weeks we're basically back at one. So eight weeks after, eight weeks after the infection, after the injection, after the fourth dose injection, basically there's no increased protection against symptomatic disease. But that, of course, that's less important. What's more important is protection against severe disease. And where is this going to go? So that's taking us for six weeks. Now, I think it's very unlikely that it's going to drop off dramatically. The case is, where does this go? If this stays level, then that kind of justifies it because we're at about three and a half times less likely to develop, develop severe disease there. Or no, in fact, it's more than that. It's about four and a half, isn't it? It's about... about well, it's about four, four, four and a half times less likely to develop severe disease there. Where's that going to go? And to be quite honest, we can't guess at this at all because this is the fourth dose and we simply don't know. So where that's going to go, is it going to stay the same? Um, is the risk going to start increasing again? Will the protection even start to increase? Well, we simply don't know. And if we were to say any of those, we would simply be guessing because we don't know. But what we can be sure about is that uh, protection against symptomatic disease drops off. So given this relatively good level of protection, um, hopefully that puts you in a better position to make a, an informed choice. About four times less likely to get severe disease if you have the fourth dose compared to people that have only had three doses after six weeks. Uh, there are, are some provisos, as you would expect, because these papers do, maybe it's just me being cynical, but these papers do tend to uh, appear to put vaccine in the best possible light. But if you read between the lines just a little bit, you can start to see some, some of the, uh, some of the um, provisos that we could add here. And so let's look at those. But let, 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 let's allow the authors to give their conclusion first. Rates of confirmed SARS coronavirus 2 infection and severe COVID-19 were lower after a fourth dose of um, Pfizer vaccine than only after two to three doses. Well, they were. Rates of confirmed SARS coronavirus 2 infection actually only stayed up for a few weeks. So that's right if you're only looking at the first three or four weeks. So that's, that's four weeks there. Then it started to go down quite dramatically. So um, I don't think that statement is particularly... Uh, helpful given the very short time periods we're talking about but severe disease and covid we will we will give that a tick because we know that that was maintained in red for much longer periods of time so yes there is protection there against severe disease from a fourth dose according to this uh, study and if this is true in israel I, I would absolutely expect it to be the same in other places as well um, protection against confirmed infection appears short-lived uh, very short-lived indeed. So we agree with the fact that it's short-lived, whereas protection against severe illness did not wane during the study time <clears throat> six weeks. So not, not a long time, but this is what it tells us. Now, <laughs> this, is the, <coughs> this, is, this is the biggie. This is the biggie here. Um, just wait till you read this line here. Um, we excluded the following persons from the analysis. Those who'd had a confirmed SARS coronavirus 2 infection before the beginning of the study. So in other words, if someone had tested positive before, that means they would have had natural immunity and they are excluded from the study. Why would you want to do that? I don't quite understand that. Why not have a category for hybrid immunity? So this study actively excluded... One, one way to look at this is this study actively excluded people who may have had natural immunity. Why, why would you want to exclude those from the study? I don't fully understand that. Now, you could say it's to prevent confounding variables between natural immunity and vaccine immunity, but I don't particularly want to know what vaccine immunity is. I want to know the totality of immunity and the totality of risk. And this simply doesn't tell us that. It really doesn't tell us that. So how much good is this study... It, it tells us what it tells us. It tells us there's protection against severe disease uh, if you've had four doses of the vaccine compared to those that have only had three doses of the vaccine at least for six weeks. 
but only apparently if you haven't had an actual infection. And we know that Omicron, for example, has been just tearing through the population with huge numbers of people being infected. Why would you want to exclude masses of the population in your study? But this did. And I put that in italics because this is a direct quote. We excluded the following persons from the analysis, those who had confirmed sars coronavirus 2 infection before the beginning of the study. The very people that would have natural immunity, the very thing that we're interested in, natural immunity, and yet that was excluded from the study. So very unfortunate. What they could have done, of course, is easily um, ha had a fourth group, the, the fourth group being those people that had, had hybrid immunity, those that had, had the infection and had vaccine in the past. That would have been easy to do. And we have seen limited data from the United States and California and uh, New York on that. And that data showed that people that had had, uh, that were fully vaccinated by the United States criteria actually had greater risk of infection and greater risk of hospitalization compared to those that had had natural infection. They had masses of levels of protection against those that, that, that were completely naive to the virus, of course. But it did show that the natural immunity on that data was as good, um, if not better than people that had been vaccinated. And it also showed that people with hybrid immunity and people with only natural immunity did roughly about the same as well. So this study simply doesn't tell us the main thing. <laughs> the, main, the main thing that we want to know, it simply doesn't tell us. Or well, the main thing I want to know anyway. But there you go. It tells us what it tells us. So I've made this note here. So this tells us nothing about the effect of natural immunity. Why does it tell us nothing? Because they were excluded from the study. Uh, so my question is this uh, to the all study authors and perhaps perhaps more importantly to those that are sponsoring these studies the people that are probably paying for these studies um why don't uh, please 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 can we have data on vaccine induced immunity versus natural induced immunity and uh, efficacy of fourth dose versus two doses for hybrid immunity in other words we really need to know how the vaccines are comparing against people that have had no vaccines. And in the UK, for example, there's still about 4 million people that have had no vaccines at all. So there is a group there. We can compare them. Um, but can we also please have the information on how, for example, a fourth dose of the vaccine compares against someone who's had two doses of the vaccine but has also had the natural infection, therefore has hybrid immunity? So a good study uh, as far as it goes, but it tells us very little of what we'd really like to know. But that's the information, and if that helps to make you to make a more informed choice, then um, that would be good. Do read the paper for yourself. It is actually quite intelligible, this paper. Um, there's no particular, uh, no particular jargon in it. It actually is uh, quite a readable paper. So there you go. Um, Probably more on facts and figures tomorrow. We do notice that the infections, the symptomatic infections in the UK are just starting to turn down now. So I believe exactly what we predicted to happen uh, a couple of months ago is starting to happen. With I think we're just peaking now in the UK. United States, not yet, but more details on that tomorrow. But um, I think we can say in the UK that cases are on the way down and I would expect them to carry on going down as well due to the combination of vaccine induced immunity and natural immunity but i believe that most of the prevention of spread it is going to be through uh, omicron induced immunity as indeed we saw in the africa situation as indeed this paper tells us nothing about but uh, interesting as far as it goes so thank you for watching